everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our 6x6 series, SG Style. Yes, and so we are going to be playing today with layout number two. And if you happen to have this class in hand, this 6x6 paper pad class with Allison Davis, please link. Uh, please look below in the show notes. There will be a discount if you wish to pick this lovely class up and have it for your reference. You don't have to, but if you want to, it is listed below for a discount. You just can't beat it. And then everything you want and uh, need for scrapbook generations is linked below love this company love this class and i love this paper pad because i'm going to be playing with a pink paisley cedar lane in this video and of course if you have the class we're going to be playing with allison's sketch number two and number four we're going to combine them together so we're going to continue with the concept of what allison is talking about using a six by six paper pad uh, as is a six by six piece of paper so that means you can also play with an eight by eight or a six by eight it's the same thing it's a concept so keep that in mind and then i'm going to talk a little bit about paper pads once i get into playing with my layout and the kit i'm going to use i'm pulling out a kit that i made we're going to talk about that so to go uh, keep talking about what allison was saying about using a six by six piece of paper as is and you know in the last video we use one piece of paper so in this case we're going to do two pieces of paper as is to build a page now again if you're not a two-page gal you can convert this to one page or if you're someone who gets inspired like i did you can create three pages you can do a little bit of both so let me uh, span things out of course i'm going to be playing with some fall uh photos of my little one when she was two and a half years old look at that face oh babies have the best faces don't they and so that's what i'm going to be playing with so of course this was a perfect fit this pink paisley cedar lane so of course you know we talked in the last video you would pick out some signature pieces and just have fun so let's have a talk about paper pads for a minute because this is paper pad party at the same time so on the right here i have a paper pad that basically came out when this original collection was released and then of course here is one from tuesday morning that came um you know followed a few years later so this was a couple years ago so you can see of course the packaging is different the marketing is different that type of thing and the price was different okay key point price was different both had 36 sheets and so i want to show you the difference and i'm going to go to the major difference right off the bat so here on the right was original and then let's look at the difference of the second running big difference in color schemes yes yeah, so i don't know uh, how that happens well i do know how it happens they just do a second printing and so the colors are not the same so this really doesn't uh, pose a problem unless you wanted to take something that you got from the original release and pair it with something that you just got it doesn't always match up that is a big difference this is more of a green teal this is a blue teal and then let's go to another piece of paper that you can clearly see a difference and I just wanted to show that, and I'll be talking more about this um, in our Spending Freeze freebie at the end of the year. Uh, it's just some things I've been realizing this year. And I think uh, you start to realize these things when you start to play with your items more. So again, here's the one that was basically original. This was the reprint. Look at the difference. Yes, a big difference. Big difference. So there is a difference. And so, of course, I'm going to be playing with the ones that, uh, which, which, I'm going to be playing with the pad that was basically from the original release because I love those colors a little bit better. So again, we'll be talking more about that. But when it comes to paper pads, um, yes, there is a difference from when you get something at a discount versus when you get it from an actual scrapbook store that was basically bought from the manufacturer. There's a difference. Okay, so, and there's nothing wrong with either. There's just a difference. That's all it is. Okay, so I'm going to be picking out two pieces of paper. Of course, here's my focal photo with that lovely little face there and so i i know i want to get the pink and the blue and of course we're in leaves we're raking leaves so of course i saw these two at the end i really like this polka dot and again using it as it is i won't be doing anything to these two pieces of paper so i'm just going to do a quick flip through because you can still find this at discount stores it's still available of course a wood grain you know speaks to my heart yes now of course i'm showing two pieces of white cardstock just for filming but that doesn't necessarily mean that might be what my layout ends up it's just for filming the paper shows up better so i'm going to do a quick flip Ugh. i can never say no to wood grain <laughs> never i think that might be the one i do for sure and i like that floral okay and this is how i pick my paper 
okay? Uh, but then look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, I want to definitely get some pink. So, hmm, I, I like the leaves. I like that. I really like that. <laughs> I can't even decide. Okay, maybe I won't decide. That's the thing. I'm going to pick two. I'm going to pick two, but I'm not going to decide for my layout. I'm not going to uh, fence me in. <laughs> no, I'm not going to fence myself in because I don't know. I haven't made a decision. So, of course, that's just two pieces of paper from a 6x6 six six paper pad. And so, of course, let's not... Um, I, I can rip these branding strips off. We'll tear them off so they won't get in the road. So we're not going to do anything to these 6x6 uh, six six papers other than simply play with them. As is. That's the concept, as is, okay? So one quick way, and if you uh, have Allison's sketches in front of you, you can clearly see uh, two easy ways. Now, of course, for me, I would trim this little perforated edge off, or you can take your fingernail and you can absolutely take that rough part off. That's an easy way to do it if you want that clear 6 by 6 So an easy way to do it, of course, if you're doing a one-page, I have showed this in other layouts. Let's talk about a one-page first. As the easy way to do this is that you simply take your two pieces of paper and you either you do it as a header or you do it as a footer. I mean, that is how quick using two pieces of paper is. And then, of course, you know what we always do at RTS. What do we do? Okay? We rotate. So right there is four options. That's four different simple designs using this concept of two six by six papers as is. Yes. Let's do that again. Let's try two more different pieces of paper. Why not? Let's just play. Let's get that flower. Because you know I'm drawn to the flower. And let's see. Could we do the pink? Or how about that teal? Oh, man, that would be pretty. Oh, maybe that's what I'll pick. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this is just the one page. Okay. So just simply. Remember I told you some of these videos are going to be quick and some are going to be long. Because this class is a quick class because it's the concept you're learning okay so again and of course my white cardstock is actually embossed it's just gorgeous and so there's the floral there's that teal so we can use it up at the top then of course you know we can break out some washi why not <laughs> why not let's just play oh i could break out this wood grain washi now someone recently asked about wood grain washi you can find some at michael's they have it in a two pack just look at the display and once in a while hobby lobby has it but then what you can do is take those six by six at the top and you could run a piece of washi up there and then you could also you could flip your paper bring it down here your six by six papers could be as a footer on the bottom Right there. And then you could run a piece of washi there. And then, of course, just like I showed, rotate. And then you could do this here. You could do it there. And then, again, rotate. Four different pages. You could sit here all night and play with a 6x6 six six paper pad simply by using two pieces of paper and doing it in those four rotations. Now, is that not quick and easy? There you go. And then, of course, you know, you just play with your photos. However many you have however many you want of course look at this little one she's laying in the leaves oh yeah look at that so then again two pieces of paper as is now that's a one page so you just can't get any easier i mean that is the abc of a page design so isn't that fun play with those patterns play with your washi play with your border stickers play with your ribbon play with your trim to cover up this seam absolutely just something different okay so now let's do what you can do, if you're going to do a two-page layout and you're only going to use two pieces of paper, what would you do? And, of course, Allison talks about this in the class, definitely read, is that you could take these two pieces of paper and then you could span them however you want to. You could take this as far flush to the left as you want or as far flush to the right. Let me see if I can get a hold of it here. Uh, to the right. Okay, now this is a two page. Now pretend this is 12 by 24. I'm just trying to make sure I have things in frame. So again, two pieces of paper as is six by six, shifting it to the right, shifting it to the left, just spanning it somewhere. Right here's my middle of my layout right here and spanning that. And then of course, what do you do? You just keep on filling up that perimeter with your photos. <laughs> Absolutely. And then of course, cut some down. Let's see, we could cut this down and then you, that's all you do. 
two pieces of paper as is, and then you just fill up your framing. You're framing with the photos, but you're starting with two pieces of paper. That is how quick it is. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Of course, now let's see if we can play with something else because you know, that was pretty quick, quick. Was it not? That was quick, quick. Now, of course, if you wanted to do a two page with that other design, you would take two up here. And I have showed this in, I think this was in our fall four for four. I've showed this. This is pretty much basic, but this is what you do. You take four pieces of paper and you line it up at the top. Let's get our washi. You run washi over that 12 by 24. And right there is an easy page. And then you come down here. Let's just stay that. Let's just do that. And then you come down here and just lay your photos. Just keep on playing. Let's see if I have any more that is. Yeah, just keep on playing. Keep on playing. Keep on playing. And then, of course, you can come up here with your title. Put your journaling here. Do a couple, you know, visual triangle or just three clusters to make a big 12 by 24 visual triangle. And that's your page. Again, you could do this over and over. <laughs> You could take these four pieces of paper and put it at the top. You could take these four pieces of paper and put it at the bottom. You could take these four pieces of paper, shift them left, and then shift one to the right. Or, let's show one more option. This this never gets old in my book. I could sit here. And again, you have 36 pieces of paper. Okay? So if you take 36 divided by four, that would be nine double-page layouts. Mm, mm, yeah. You talk about a quick process when it comes to getting some pages done. That would be it. Okay. And I do, do, do love using washi to cover up that seam. It's just one of those things. You know, we have a lot of it. Might as well use it. I want to show this right here. Let's take this into the inseam to the left. Let's take this to the inseam to the right. Oh my. Mm -mm. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. There you go. And then, of course, you can come here and just keep lining up your photos. Uh, let's see, we could line them up this way. You could line them up this way. There is no wrong way. No, there's no wrong way. You can keep lining up. And then you could definitely get six to eight to ten photos. Do I have any more like this? Okay, let me just use, let's just use the horizontal. Okay. And say this was another four by six. Look how quick that is. Well, we'll just do it this way. We'll say this is a four by six in the horizontal. Look how easy that is. And then you could run a big long title here. You could put just a few little sprinkling of embellishments here or leave the paper as is. Do nothing with it. And then you could do a, a, some, a couple little clusters. That is how quick a page can come together. <laughs> just love this absolutely so what will i be doing i will be doing a two page layout because i love these photos i love this pink paisley cedar lane and then i also too i simply just want to play because i'm going to show you what i'm going to be using of course i'm going to be using all of this washi you know i'm not going to use it all i'm going to play with <laughs> this paper pad i have a whole bag of embellishments look at those breads frames flowers flare look at the rhinestones sequin stars and then i have uh, pocket page cards i have some wood veneer i have some cedar lane puffies and then also i have some cork now where did all this come from well i'll just show you i have a homemade kit i did the video will be listed below it is under the building the kit building kits series which is under ready to scrap playlist. I'll have that all linked below because Donna and I built this kit together. Yes, this was starting with a kit and we wanted to build one together because Donna wanted to see the actual selection process. So we started both with this six by six paper pad. We built it, we made it into a fall and then she wanted to see a masculine element added to a kit. So I took this paper pad and added a masculine feel to it. So that video will be linked below so you can definitely look at that using this paper pad. A lot of us have this and you cannot just have this fall. It can be every day, but then you can also use this for masculine pages. Definitely look at that kit below. It was extremely fun to do. And uh, Dawn and I really enjoyed it. It was just really fun. So I have all these elements to play with and I didn't have to do anything but go to my closet and pull out a page kit. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, this is more than a page kit. This is actual kit. Yes. So I will be playing with this, but I will be doing a two page. And I will definitely be playing off of this pink and that dark right there that color right there that dark turquoise i will be playing off of that just because i simply want to now look at this look at this washi now here's some more wood grain washi let's talk about that okay so here's a floral wood grain here's a dark wood grain here is a chevron wood grain 
and all three of these came from Michaels. Yes, so definitely look into Michaels and wait till they have a, a half off of their washi. They do that every so often. And so then I have all these other colors to play with. And then these, yes. You see why I say I may need a number six box when it comes to my washi? Because in my kits, I include washi. This is a great, a lot of people say they have washi and they don't use it. This is the time to use it when you're using six by six papers because then you have this seam here. What else would you want to do with it? Okay, yes. And you know the Vanessa trick. And I'll talk about that when I come back because it bears worth repeating. Look at that. Covers up that seam so nicely. Absolutely. Okay, so that is the 6x6 six six paper pad as is using two. Absolutely. So if you have uh, Allison's class, definitely look at sketch number two, sketch number four for more inspiration. And when we come back, we will be talking about Allison's layouts and what she did uh, to make them her own and then what I did to make this my own. Okay, hold on. All right, I am back with my finished two-page layout, and I love how it turned out because I love these papers, because I love this paper pad, <laughs> yes, by Pink Paisley Cedar Lane, and then it was so fun to just play because I had that entire kit in front of me, just very, very fun. So you can see that with my 6 by 6 papers, it is so simple as two on the left, two on the right as is. I did nothing other than just adhere them. And so on the left, you can see that I have two adhered clear to the top, and then on the right, those same two six by six as is adhered right to the top. And we'll talk about this strip here in a minute. <clears throat> now you'll see that I have a gully in between here and in between here. And why? Because my papers or my cardstock did not meet, meet up to that six by six, so that would be you know, a six by 12. It just didn't. I had some spacing there. So I thought I didn't want it on this side, didn't want it on this side. So I just put that little gully and isn't that something? These are six by six papers and a six by six pad. So how come I have this gully? It's just the way manufacturers, that's just how things are cut. And so of course I took four patterns and that's what makes this layout so colorful and so easy. And it looks complicated, but it isn't. It's because of those four patterns. And then of course I did a lineup of photos here on the bottom. How many photos did I get? Three, four, five, six, seven. Could have got another one but I was short. I only had seven photos. I did have another one, but it was the same replication of this one. So to make up that line of photos, I took a journaling card and I cut it down because these photos, this was before digital and before four by six. So these are three and a half by five. I just cut that down. So of course here on the left, I have a mega cluster on the right a big mega, mega cluster. And then do I have a visual triangle? You absolutely could count this as one of those visual triangle points. You really could. And so for that journaling card, all I did was I used my zig pen and I did some faux stitching around the heart. So when you want your faux stitching to look like real stitching, you just remember the uh, smaller the stitch, the better the itch. <laughs> absolutely. And that's what you can remember. <laughs> yeah, it is. Smaller the stitch, the better the itch because <laughs> the smaller the stitch, it just looks a little bit more neater and tighter than if you did big stitching. It just looks a little bit more real. And then of course, just plopped a braid right in the center of that. That is how quick. And so then of course, at the seam here for the six by six papers, I added washi up here to cover the seam and that perforated edge that came out of the paper pad. I didn't trim that off. I left it as is and I covered it with washi. So let's talk about the Vanessa trick. Uh, and then we will talk about these clusters and then we have a bonus and a bonus and a little bit of fun. So hang on. And so you can see on my photos, all I did was adhere them down in a linear fashion. I put two over here in frames. They were in the kit and I wanted to use them. That is a great way. If you have extra photos, just cut out the small part and put them in frames and it acts as an embellishment as well. Plus you get more photos. And so of course I simply could, if I had some more, if I had more uh, photos uh, that I could cut down or if I had some mini wallets, you know, little mini ones, I could have ran another whole row and that would have been beautiful to finish this layout. I could have done another whole row here and another whole row here of photos. You could have got a lot on there. And so what I did for my photos is I simply added some phrase stickers from my mind's eye. Now this one right here is one complete phrase from the sticker sheet. It says, 
I love you even more today. How precious. Now, what I did for this one and this one is that I took some of these smaller words and I made up my own phrase. So here on the left, it says, you are my happy. On the right here, it says, love my time with you. So when you have a bunch of these little ones, you can see sometimes the little ones get used last. Pair them up. Make some own your own phrases, your own little subtitles, your own little mini journaling on your photo. Now, let's talk about journaling for a minute because I will have a couple lines, and it's going to go up here on the pink, and I'm going to put it on this pink graph. I'm going to print it out on copy paper, and then I'm going to adhere this to the top of the copy paper and then run it through my printer again. And I only have a couple lines. And I would have done it today, but today's one of those days that if I start journaling about this, that, and my little girl, and I'll just start boohooing. So... You know, there's just some days you can't journal. I'll do it later. It's just it's just one of those days. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. It's just one of those days. Okay, so now let's talk about the Vanessa trick and the washi trick and taking the Vanessa trick to another level. Let's talk about that. Okay, so for at the top here, this pink dot, that is absolutely washi. That's not pattern paper, that's washi. And so if I was to take this washi, and the reason it is called the Vanessa trick because my friend Vanessa Bell, she has a YouTube channel and she has a fabulous YouTube channel. She does Disney pages. She uses a lot of color. She does mixed media. She just does a little bit of everything. So definitely I will have her link below. And she taught us this years ago and this was the game changer, the game changer when it came to washi. So that's why I call it the Vanessa trick because she taught us. She's the one that taught us, you know, give credit where credit is due. So you take your washi and you put on your piece of pattern paper. Well, it messes up your paper, and then you don't even see the washi. Well, that's a dud. So what Vanessa taught us was, is that you take a piece of white cardstock, and I always use the back of a piece of paper I don't care for, I'm not gonna use, and then you take your washi, and you do a strip. Now, I always just do a 12 inch at, at a time, because that's usually how I use it, but you don't have to. I mean, it's a good use of that. And then you just trim it out, okay? I would just take that washi, run it the whole way down, and so then, that's what you get right there. And so then what you would do is that you would adhere it with ATG or your liquid. I always make sure I put some on the corners with my quick dry because I don't want it. If you, went to, if you were to try to lift this up, you can't. I adhere those very ends on that strip. But you can just use the ATG because it is paper. And so then what you can do along with that, okay, because here's what it looks like. That's the washi on pattern paper. That's what it is, the washi on cardstock. And then you put it on top of a piece of paper. Like I said, it is the game changer when you're talking about washi. So then the other thing I want to show with that is, is that you now look at washi not as washi. You now look at it as embellishment and pattern paper. Because now you can take that washi, put on some cardstock, and now you can um, use your punches. You can use your edge punches. It, depending on your dye and your sandwich, you can sometimes do it with that way too. And then you can make embellishments with your washi. Yes, it's no longer just washi. It's embellishments. And then I see it as pattern paper. Because I teach this in when I'm building kits, that if you're short on a piece of paper, say if you're building a kit and you need some red, well, go to your washi and use that. Because I have even taken my washi and ran it two or three times, depending on what I need for my layout. But then you can use this as a title base, an embellishment base, or just simply an embellishment. Too fun. Just love that. And you can then, let me just show you. You could take something like this, and I did use my hexagon punch for my fishtails, quick, quick. You could cut that in half, and then now you could use this as, you could, right there. I'll just show you. Now you can use that as a little embellishment flags. It, it just never stops. Like I said, it is the game changer. So now let's look at the black washi. And so for my seam here, my black washi, I did not put it on white cardstock because for black, it has an impact. You don't need to always do it for your black. And then also to thin washi. It's kind of a little hard getting it on that paper and then trimming it down. So for thin washi, I don't really try to do that. But for black, you don't have to do the white. Because right here you have wood grain and then the black on top of it. It really doesn't change your washi. So black washi is awesome. Now let's take the Vanessa trick and let's uh, step it off a notch. Because this was what I was going to do. I was going to take this floral wood grain right here. Floral wood wood grain washi. Yeah, now that's the, that's the best of everything right there. So that's what it looks like. Okay, it's beautiful. I think you can find it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And then what I wanted to do is I just put on white cardstock, and so that's what I was going to use. So you can see a difference there. There is a difference. 
it's up to you what you like. There is no wrong way to do it. If you like it this way, use it that way. But if I would put that same floral wood grain here, yeah, it looks even different. So, but then when I went to use it on a page, it did not give me the look I wanted, but I wanted to show you what my plan was. My plan was to take another roll of washi and then put that on top of washi. So another thing, you can take that Vanessa trick and then layer more washi on top of it. Another game changer. Of course, you know, just use this little hexagon punch and you can create a flag in no time. Look at that. Awesome. Love that. Love my hexagon punches. I'd never get rid of them. And so that was the plan, but I wanted to show that that is a Vanessa trick. I've gotten some questions about that and you can definitely quit looking at washi as just a roll of washi. Now it is pattern paper. Now it's embellishment. It's a uh, title basis. It's embellishment. Yeah. It's a little bit of everything right now. So thank you, Vanessa, for teaching that to us. That oh, was many, many years ago. And I always just call it the Vanessa trick because she's the one that taught it. Okay, so now let's talk about these mega clusters here on the left and the right. Well, first of all, before we do that, let's have a little bit of fun. How about another giveaway? Why not? <laughs> yes. Okay, so I have another 6x6 six six paper pad because we are in the 6x6 six six paper pad series. And what I will do is at the end of this series, I will draw names for every one of the giveaways. And then, of course, if anybody is watching this after the event of our series, this would not be applicable because this is for a time only. And so what I will do is just draw some names. And for this one, we have My Mind's Eye. This is designed by Jen Allison. It's called Wonder. I thought it would be perfect. We're talking about some outdoor. And of course, you can do this for a lot of different layouts, not just camping or outdoor because of the color scheme. Too pretty. And then I have the stamp set to go with it. How fun. And look how many different fonts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six different fonts in that stamp set. There's 16 in there. And of course, you got the marshmallows on the stick. Love that script adventure. And I love that explore. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Just pretty. And then, of course, I have the die cut pack. There's 60 in there to go with that. So you need to be 18. A subscriber, of course, a subscriber. And then this is for anybody because I don't think it would take very much to mail this. So let's just have a little bit of fun available to everybody. Now, I, w I did want to say I did have one leftover photo. I've had to film this a couple times, so if I'm repeating, please forgive me. I do have one leftover photo, so what will I do with this? And I talk about this in our photo series. That playlist will be linked below, what I do with leftovers. But I'll put the date on this. My little girl was two and a half, and this was back in 99. <laughs> 1999. And then I will put this in a leftover box in her tab section. That's clearly what I do. You can use leftovers for story story and review pages. So for the clusters, so you know, right here I showed you I used one of these journaling cards, just cut it down, and then I used that as a photo filler and also to an embellishment. And then I used another three before card here as my title base. And I started with that three before card and I built up. And I then went with my title in this cork. I added some leaves. And then of course I added some flare and a puffy and another puffy. And then I finished off with a smaller puffy and then finished off with wood grain enamel dots. Does that get any better than wood grain enamel dots? I don't think so. And so then on the left, oh, I'm sorry, on the right, I did the same thing. It's just I used different colors. And then instead of the title, I used two photo frames and got two more additional photos in. And you can see I used the same thing. Cork, puffies, enamels, same thing. And so you'll see that these, both of these clusters are the same size. And I wanted them the same size because I thought putting them here just gave me an anchor for this entire layout. Love how it turned out. Absolutely. Okay. So now I think, do we need to talk about Allison's? I don't even know if I talked about hers. I don't think I did. Let's talk about Allison's and then we'll talk about what we're going to do in the next layout. So if you look at Allison's layouts in sketch number two, look how she used two pieces of paper as is for an entire two page layout, just two pieces of paper. And then also notice how she did her journaling. Now that takes a little bit of dedication, a little bit of time, but she also inked every one of them. And then she got her signature style in with her stitching. And then look at what she used for embellishments. She, she used pre-made uh, elements. And sometimes when you're getting into a technique, that's what you do. You use pre-made embellishments. And so that's what she did. And then look at sketch number four, where she did her two pieces of paper on the left and two pieces of paper on the right basically looks like this. But then look what she did. I have washi, but look what Allison used. 
very fun and then of course that sketch calls for 11 photos but look how she did her photos very very fun okay so that is going to wrap up layout number two using two pieces of paper as is from a lovely six by six paper pad and you could be playing with this if you get your name in just leave a comment below you could be playing with that six by six paper pad in the near future perhaps so in when, when we come back uh, in a few days and maybe two three four days in between is that we're going to be uh, doing a, we're going to be playing with sketch number three if you have that companion class by your side and if you if you don't no worries you don't have to but if you want to I think you should have this in your life absolutely and you can get it in your life at a discount so just hit the show more button and you'll see all the information listed below just a great class it's really good price point I mean even without a discount it's very very uh, reasonable 49 50 pages absolutely okay so that's all we have for today come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna do bye